Hello everybody, I'm super excited to crack open this box here and take a look and show you guys what's inside. One, two, three. It is the Ultra Ford Experience, first version. And there it is in a beautiful white, orange, and mint green colorway. So I am bringing this over here to the Dad Adventures channel because I feel like, because well, one, dad have feet, and two, I'm constantly, you know, running around and doing all kinds of things, uh, way more during my week than running. So I figured why not bring this shoe review stuff over to this channel here. Uh, and also what I wanna do is, um, well, I wanna try these out from not only a runner standpoint, but of uh, being, a dad interacting, running around, doing all kinds of craziness that I typically do. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the shoe. So this here is their first non-zero drop shoe, meaning uh, zero drop being the same um, distance from the ground and as far as the midsole from the back to the front. In this case, it's not the same, all right? This is their first shoe with an offset, meaning it goes a little bit higher in the back to a little bit lower in the front. The specs are there on your screen as a four millimeter drop. The weight is also on your screen as well. So I picked this up with the idea of it being uh, wide in the toe box and plush in the heel and a neutral shoe, meaning that it doesn't have any stabilizing features. I do have a high arch and I do supinate, meaning I come down on this side of my foot quite heavily and my arch is semi-rigid, okay? So I want a shoe that kind of gives me some feedback of the ground and twists and doesn't need any stabilization features, such as a stability shoe. So taking a look at the upper, here we have, uh, looks like an engineered mesh with lots of ventilation. Let me pull out the old, the old shoe filler here and see, yep, I have quite a bit of daylight coming through um, to allow good airflow here. We'll get these on feet for, um, for a little bit here for an idea that I'll tell you about here in a second. But moving into the laces, I do like to talk about laces. They are nice, they are padded, and they do have a little bit of stretch to them. I've had good experience with ultra laces in the past, meaning that uh, once you tie them up, they don't untie because they are just so, so great. And they also typically lay nicely across the top of the midfoot there. Moving into the tongue of the shoe, I like to look to see if it's what's called gusseted, meaning is there any attachment from the tongue to the inside of the upper material of the shoe? And taking a look inside, it is a non-gusseted tongue, meaning that this uh, tongue here can roam about the top of my foot as it wishes. And, um, you know, I do have some mixed feelings about gusseted, gussets on uh, the tongues of shoes, meaning, um, as I do tend to supinate, the tongue typically does want to disappear into usually that lateral side of the shoe, but we will see here. Uh, it's got quite a bit of padding here uh, to my touch and then kind of working my way around kind of that heel area. I'm putting my fingers in and oh yeah, on both the lateral medial side where my fingers are, there's quite a bit of padding, very plush feeling. Moving back to this Achilles tab, uh, which is, um, very, very padded towards the heel, but then the uh, the actual notch here is fairly stout. I mean, it's got a little bit of give to it, but not a ton, okay? And uh, there's no heel clip, there's no neutral, there's no uh, stabilizing features back here, as you can see. Uh, moving in, and then uh, there's that signature ultra foot shape. Uh, there's three different foot shapes here. This is their kind of in the middle foot shape. It's not super duper big like the original or super slim like the slim, uh, which is more of a, a conventional shoe. This is kind of dead in the center. Love it. Alrighty. So moving into the midsole of the shoe, there on the screen are the specs again as far as the thickness goes. I am looking at a, uh, I don't know if this is Ego or Ego Max. There it is on your screen uh, as far as their types of cushioning that they do, but it looks like you do have two kinds, one in the posterior and then one in the three quarter uh, four foot here. Um, taking a look at the back here, there are some little um, you know protrusions as far as the midsole into the, the uh, fabric of the shoe on both sides here, uh, maybe giving a little bit of support to, um, to the heel. On my channel, I like to pull out the tongues of shoes and take a look at the Ultra here. Uh, it's quite padded and quite nice. 
Other than that, there's no real, uh, you know, fancy features about it. There's no holes for drainage or anything like that. It's just a nice, plush um, liner for the inside of the shoe. And looking inside, you can kind of see what's going on inside the shoe as far as the stitching goes. Um, it's kind of hard for you guys to get in there, but let me feel inside to see if there's any weird stitching. I usually look for kind of around the pinky side of the the uh, the shoe as far as any weird, you know, um, stitching that wants to go up and ride. And then on the where the big toe goes, and no, I'm not feeling it. It's super duper smooth. And so we're just gonna pop this um, back into the shoe here. It, I don't know if this is what I would consider an accommodative shoe, meaning you can stick a, uh, a, a custom orthotic or anything like that, but uh, it does seem like Ultra shoes do have a fairly uh, deep amount as far as volume goes uh, for a lot of those over-the-counter type uh, inserts that you see from aftermarket brands. Uh, one that comes to mind is uh, Superfeet, and then there's a bunch of other ones out there too. Okay, and then get my fingers into kind of that midsole and it does feel pretty, uh, pretty springy. So we'll get it on foot here in a second and see how it feels. Coming on into the outsole of the shoe here, we have a very little amount of rubber towards the front and then towards the back and then a whole bunch of midsole foam in the center, kind of a rubberized feel to that foam. Okay, and Ultra does like to put these Interflex grooves in their shoes. I am no stranger to Ultra. I've, you know, worn them for quite some time and this is kind of their, their signature deal, all right? Taking a look here in between. All right, so it's pretty flexible this way and it's flexible that way. And then lastly, it's flexible this way too. All right, oh, there it is written. You got 28 and 32 written on the shoe as far as your stack height. Really appreciate that Ultra, so we can know exactly what it is that we're working with. I'd say that's about medium uh, height as far as midsoles these days. <laughs> Gosh knows that there's plenty of uh, super stack shoes on the market and I would not consider this a super stack shoe at all. Okay, so what am I planning to do with this shoe? Well, here we are, I'm a dad and I'm on my feet and I'm running around with the kids and the family quite a bit. I want to see how this shoe compare holds. I want to see how this shoe holds up over the next 30 days. That's right. I'm going to wear this shoe for every single activity minus yard work for the next 30 days. And tomorrow we are planning on going to a theme park, Valley Fair for anybody in Minnesota that knows what I'm talking about. And I'm going to wear this pair of shoes for that and I'm gonna uh, check them out and see how they hold up and I'm gonna wear them to work I'm gonna stand in them I'm gonna walk in them I'm gonna run in them one activity that involves running is me coming directly home from work and then my daughter is right there with her bike and she wants to go run me up and down the road so I don't have I don't take the time to change or anything like that so these shoes will be on my feet and I will run in them also after work I might run a little bit around uh, my workplace to to do that so this shoe is gonna do it and see it all and I'm gonna see uh, what it looks like at the end of all that. And then I'm gonna show you guys here in a video, a little 30 day on foot durability test, review, all the good stuff coming up uh, in a future video. But this is just a, a quick little overview of the Ultra Ford Experience 1.0. There it is on your screen. Beautiful, beautiful shoe. This is the one and only time that you're gonna see it this color, meaning all perfectly white and pristine, because I'm telling you, I guarantee that it will not look like this when I'm done with it. All right, and there's shoe number two. Let's actually pop these on the feet and see how they feel. Oh, and just for comparison's sake, I am wearing an Ultra shoe right now. This is the Ultra Paradigm 6, and it has been a wonderful, wonderful shoe. It's a stability shoe, I know. I'm not a stability guy, but I really like this shoe, and I'm hoping that this tradition can carry over to the forward experience. So we shall see. So walking along here, the first thing I'm noticing is a little bit of heel slippage right there. There are some LASIK techniques that I can use in order to uh, tighten that up and bring that heel towards my foot so that it's uh, not a game changer as far as uh, wearing the shoe and everything. But um, having a feel, this is uh, true to size to me. I went uh, size 11 and here we are on the tippy toe here of the big toe and there's a little bit of room in the front. It doesn't feel tight or constrictive or anything like that. Uh, it feels very, very padded. Uh, where my heel is touching the inside of the shoe uh, feels nice and cushioned. 
All right, so we're gonna walk along here. And uh, the first thing I'm noticing is just kind of how it feels on the heel. Uh, that's nice. And then how my um, forefoot wants to move along in front. Uh, there's uh, usually a pinch point for me on my pinky uh, toe here, and that is not the case with the Ultra here. So, and then as I'm moving along, I can feel the heel starting to flex with me, so it's not slipping nearly as much. And we've only had it on for, you know, a couple of minutes here. So, um, yeah, so far so good. In fact, I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys quickly what I'm talking about. It's called the runner's dot, and that brings the, the heel of the shoe towards you a little bit and tightens things up. And it'll be helpful to see and to try on this particular shoe here. So, what I do, to get the runner's knot is I come around into the top eyelet here of the shoe along the upper and then do the same on this side here. And then when I'm done doing that, I give it a good, a good little uh, pull there. I grab my loop here and I come through with the uh, opposite lace and I do it for both sides. And then when I'm done doing that, I bring it on in and oh yeah, that's really, really uh, helping tighten up the shoe there as far as the heel goes. Um, you don't want to do it super duper tight for, for all day long because that can be quite tight on the top here. Um, but again, I feel like the the inside of the shoe around the heel is uh, is a lot tighter. Uh, let's give it a walk and see how we feel. So just doing the runner's knot here really helped out the, uh, the heel of the shoe. It's not slipping around nearly as much anymore. In fact, it's not slipping at all versus the shoe that I did not do that on. Uh, there's uh, there's a little bit of slippage. So, you know, that's fine. I do that sort of uh, lacing technique on most of my shoes anyway. Um, so it's not it's not a deal breaker. In fact, now the shoe really feels good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it as far as the fit goes now. It's possible to make this shoe really sing using that runner's knot. So um, if you have a, a skinny little foot like myself, you go right ahead and you do that. All right, it's not gonna, you know, be the end all and be all of the shoe, but it sure does help me. Awesome everybody, if you found value in this video, please click like, maybe subscribe to follow along with the journey of the shoes, and then all the other cool little projects that we're doing around the house. Kidoki, thank you so much, appreciate you watching. Have a wonderful day.